Ever wonder where you stand on the social hierarchy of men? Discover the six distinct archetypes. Omega, Gamma, Delta, Beta, Alpha, and Sigma. And find out which makes each one unique in my latest deep dive. The social sexual hierarchy is a theoretical framework that categorizes individuals particularly men, into different groups based on perceived social dynamics, personality traits, and behavioral and social sexual context. The social sexual hierarchy is more of a cultural construct than a scientifically validated framework. It often simplifies complex human behaviors and relationships into rigid categories, which can be limited and stereotypical. Additionally, it tends to reflect traditional gender roles and expectations, which may not be applicable or relevant to everyone. This hierarchy is often discussed in certain online communities and popular culture, but should be approached with a critical understanding of its limitations and the diversity of human personalities and relationships. I'm gonna give the pros and cons of each one, and Black Shirt Guy is gonna give the pros and cons of each one as it relates to women. So let's go. Positive traits of an Omega male. Independence. Omega males tend to be self-reliant and very comfortable with themselves. Self-awareness. They have a deep understanding of themselves. Creativity. Omega males tend to excel in creative fields. Nonconformity. They are not bound to any societal expectations. Loyalty. They tend to form deep and meaningful relationships. Empathy. They're very empathetic and understanding. Calmness. Omega males tend to have a calmness to themselves and a laid back demeanor. An intellect, they often value knowledge and learning. Here's some possible negative traits of an Omega male. Social isolation, it's very difficult sometimes to form connections with others. Lack of ambition, sometimes they lack the drive or ambition for a career path. Avoidance and responsibility. Omega males tend to have a carefree lifestyle versus taking responsibility. Social awkwardness. They struggle sometimes at parties or in large groups. Passivity. They tend to be very passive and avoid conflicts in life. Disconnection from reality. They can disconnect themselves from typical everyday responsibility. Perceived unreliability. When it comes to professional and social commitments, sometimes Omega men can't be counted on. Low social status. They are at the bottom of the social pyramid. Let's talk about Omega males and their women. They seek genuine relationships. They have loyalty and commitment, empathy and understanding, respect for independence, creativity and depth. But the problem is their challenges overwhelm the positivity that they have. Their social awkwardness. They lack traditional ambition, which women find attractive. Passivity in relationships. Perceived unreliability and social isolation. The bottom line is they're perceived as losers, oddballs, weirdos, whatever name you want to put on it. They have unconventional hobbies like mind-stimulating strategies, also involved heavily in the gaming. They tend to have collectibles. Sometimes they can even be immature. Now with that in itself, is that a bad thing? Particular hobbies they do? No, not at all. It's just a trait that they often have. They can also be not competitive. They're the opposite of alphas, sometimes the opposite of sigmas. They have no regard for appearance. They often aren't attractive. They really don't fit in. They can be very clingy because they have fear of being alone. They're not career oriented, but they could have had parents that pushed them into a particular career. They're smarter than the average male and they can be very successful if they actually created something. For example, created something in their dorm room or in the garage, which you see in the tech world. They can be very popular in the performing arts and a non-traditional career oriented textbook mindset, if you will. These men can often be used by women. The flip side of it is they can also use women too. Well, how is that so? Perfect example, Omega men will use their career, right? Hey, I'm in this performance arts, or I created this particular tech software, or I'm a doctor, or I'm an attorney because their parents or their mommy pushed them into a structured program like that and they advertise that and women will use them, they would actually get someone prettier than them because of their career, right? But women would actually use them. 
The flip side is also true, but often gets overlooked. A lot of times, because these are bright individuals, right? They actually use their career to actually get someone who's prettier than them. So an Omega man, and I hate to sound, well, no, duh, but the bottom line at this level, Omega men will get an Omega woman, right? There, it is a pyramid, even though it's they're at the bottom, they still will go out and have dates. They would get married and and and, and have and have women in their lives. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. But in some cases, they wouldn't have particular women if it wasn't for their potential wealth or their career that they have later on in life. Here are some positive traits of gamma males. Intelligence. Gamma males are highly intelligent and value knowledge. Self-awareness. Gamma males have an understanding of their surroundings. Creativity. Gamma males can be very creative and they can be very innovative. Depth and thoughtfulness. They can be reflective and consider the deeper meanings of life. Empathy and understanding. They can recognize other people's feelings and perspectives. Nonconformity. Gamma males are not bound to social norms. Reliability. Even though they don't seek the spotlight, they are definitely very reliable. Loyalty. Gamma males form deep and meaningful relationships. Resilience. They can navigate challenges independently. Innovative problem solving. Sometimes they offer a different perspective that others may not recognize. Potential negative traits of gamma males. Social awkwardness. Gamma males sometimes feel uncomfortable in certain social circumstances. It makes it very difficult for them to maintain relationships. Overthinking. Analysis by paralysis. Isolation. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. Lack of assertiveness. They miss opportunities because they don't push for themselves. Indecisiveness. They really can't make quick decisions sometimes. Sensitivity to criticism. They really can't take negative feedback sometimes. Nonconformity. While their independence is strength, they often can't work in groups sometimes. Passivity. They take a passive approach to life and they're not really go-getters. Difficulty in leadership roles. They really don't assert authority. Perceived arrogance. Sometimes their knowledge and intelligence may come across arrogant, which makes it hard for them to relate to others. Emotional overload. They can be overwhelmed by their own emotions. Avoidance of practical realities. Sometimes they're focused on whatever they need to focus on. They lose touch with reality and what actually needs to be done in their life. Let's talk about Gamma and their women. Some positive traits. Emotional depth. They have meaningful connections. Thoughtful engagement. Empathy and understanding supportive partners and they're actively listening, loyalty and commitment, dependable partners and long-term focus, respect for independence, mutual respect, and they're not controlling, intellectual stimulation, engaging communication and shared interests, creativity and uniqueness, creative experiences and unconventional perspectives. However, sometimes their challenges override the positives. For example, social awkwardness, difficult initiating relationships, misunderstandings, overthinking and indecisiveness, decision paralysis and relationship anxiety, isolation tendencies, withdrawing, balancing alone time, lack of assertiveness, unmet needs and conflict avoidance, emotional sensitivity, handling criticism, emotional overload, nonconformity, they have an unconventional approach, societal pressures, passivity, and they can lack taken initiative. Bottom line is, gamma males can be fake sigmas, misfits, bitter, generally put in the friend zone. I know betas get stereotyped that way, but we talked about this earlier. When we look at all six, you have to include the gamma male, right? The beta male is actually in the middle of the pact. They can be orbiters. What an orbiter is, is a guy who hangs out with a woman and all he does is bash. Bash the current guy she's dating, right? They orbit around because they're in the friend zone. They're looking for their shot. So the bottom line is, if you want to hang out with a woman, don't be an orbiter. Don't bash your man. You come across gamma. You tend to be generous because you're looking for approval. You have an unrealistic view of romance hopelessly romantic. You tend to be like in the movies, which is not real life, and you have no substance behind you to support that. You can generally be a con man, you're less attractive, and you're not in shape. You actually feel entitled for love because you're putting in the effort for that. But you're a sexual reject. You you can be a stalker. You're a dichotomous psychopath. The reason being, sometimes you have a a relationship where you hate women, sometimes you have a view that you love women. You tend to view women as transactional. You're doing all this nice effort and you expect something in return. You can appear to be the nice guy, 
and sometimes you are. You're a little nerdy. You harbor resentment. Your willingness to share your expertise, but can be risk averse. You tend to strive on knowledge versus a doer. The perfect example that I've seen this all the time is in the educational field. You'll run into somebody who's a gamma, he's got 16 PhDs, and he's never been in the real world. You're quick to anger. And my last point is, I wanna make this very clear, Sometimes you hear these stories of the fat Hollywood producer couldn't get a date in the whole life if he wasn't a Hollywood producer, right? You have all these women that want these particular roles and he forces them to go out with them in, in order to get that role, right? We assume that guy's an alpha. And guess what? Sometimes he could be. But let me offer you a different perspective. Could he also be gamma? Because we assume that the alpha is using the women, correct? But what if we flip it around that the women are using him? He would be gamma. He's in a spot that no attractive woman would love him. Now you have all these attractive women. They're trying to use him to get that Hollywood role. That person would be a gamma in that particular case. Some positive traits of Delta males. Reliability. They can be very dependable and consistent. Hardworking. If pointed in the right direction, they can be very dedicated and persevere. Practicality. They can be very grounded and be really good problem solvers. Team players. They can be very cooperative and supportive amongst friends and colleagues. Loyalty. They can be very committed and stable in relationships. Humility. Unassuming and modest. Adaptability. They can be very flexible and resilient. Balanced approach. They can be well-rounded and moderation. Empathy and understanding. They can be very compassionate and good listeners. Commitment to self-improvement. If it's something they really like, they can be growth-oriented and have a learning attitude. Here's some potential negatives of Delta males. Lack ambition. They can be overly predictable. They can have conflict avoidance. They can be really dependent on a routine. They can have self-doubt. They have a tendency to follow since they lack leadership. They can have emotional reservation. They can lack vision. They often feel the pressure to fit in. And they can have a low self-esteem. Now let's talk about the Delta males and their women. Delta males are very reliable, dependable partners, consistent support. They have loyalty, committed relationships, and trustworthiness. They're supportive nature, they're encouraging, and good listeners. Practicality, problem solvers, and a stable lifestyle. Humility, they're unpretentious, and they're appreciative. Sometimes their challenges override their positive traits. For example, lack of ambition, perceived complacency, and limited growth conflict avoidance, unresolved issues, and very passive behavior, emotional reservation, communication barriers, and emotional disconnect, routine bound, predictability, and resistance to change, lack of assertiveness, unmet needs, and decision making. The bottom line, these people represent the bulk of the population. They're the average Joe, not particularly striking mentally or physically. My extreme impersonation of a Delta male I just want to sit home and express myself. Hey, you give me a job. <laughs> these people have, in the, in the extreme point of view, these people have no self-pride. They will marry your daughter and mooch off their father-in-law. They don't care if they're not the king of their own castle. Like I said, they're not attractive. They appear to be weak weak-minded also, no self-improvement desires whatsoever. They can be mysterious, that's why sometimes they're fake sigmas. And being mysterious can be attractive towards women. Do they get Delta women? Absolutely. But the main women that do get, they are broken women. Broken women will find a Delta male attractive. Women who settle will find a Delta man attractive. These people go in, punch in, punch out, and that's the routine. They have no desire to lead. They have no desire to self-improve. They just exist. They tend to be very passive and often play the victim. Before I begin with beta male, I just wanna say this one thing. I'm guilty of this too. In prior videos, I say beta simp, beta simp. Betas get knocked down all the time for being on the bottom of the pyramid. In reality, as you've already seen in this video, beta males are actually in the middle of the pyramid, right? It goes beta, alpha and sigma and so forth, right? 
what happens is in society is we automatically write off the bottom three because beta is actually the minimum standard that, uh, trying to avoid the word normal, but a regular woman would actually go out with, right, and actually seek. So in reality, beta is in the middle, but when we also talk about who's at the bottom, beta tends to be the one that's at the bottom because they're actually the minimum standard. So I wanted to say that before we continue. So here's some positive traits of beta males. They have a supportive nature. They're encouraging and team players. Empathy, they have understanding and they make good listeners. Loyalty, faithful and dependable. Humility, modest and they're approachable. Cooperation, they're collaborable and they're peaceful. Reliability, they're consistent and they're responsible. Emotional intelligence, they're self-aware and have interpersonal skills. Compassion, they're very caring people. Balance, they have a work-life balance and they're grounded. Resilience, they're steady and they're adaptable. Possible negative traits of a beta male. Passivity, avoiding leadership and indecisiveness. Conflict avoidance, avoiding confrontation and suppressing one's feelings. Overdependence on others. Lack of initiative and they need approval. Low assertiveness. Difficult setting boundaries and expressing their needs. Self-esteem issues. They have a lack of confidence and they underestimate themselves. Conformity. Risk averse and resistance to change. Overtly sensitive and taking things personally. Complacency. Lack of ambition and settling. Difficulty with independence. They need support and they fear solitude. Over-accommodating, people-pleasing, and neglecting self-care. Let's talk about betas and their women. Again, we've already talked about this. I want to reiterate, betas are not at the bottom, they're in the middle. But again, the minimum standard for women sometimes could be a beta, so they often get pegged as the bottom floor. So some positive aspects on betas with their women. Supportive and nurturing. Emotional support and offer encouragement. Loyal and committed. Faithfulness and consistency. Respectful and considerate. Equality and thoughtfulness. Cooperative and team oriented. Shared responsibilities and problem solving emotional intelligence, understanding and patience, and conflict resolution. However, sometimes the negatives will outweigh the positives. For example, passivity and indecisiveness, lack of initiative and decision-making, over-dependence and needing approval. They seek validation and they have a low self-esteem. Conflict avoidance, unresolved issues and suppresses their needs. Routine and predictability, lack of excitement and resistance to change. Emotional sensitivity, they take things personally and often can have an emotional overload. The bottom line, Betas are followers of alphas. They can be submissive. They look up to women. They need leadership. They look good and they do get women. They're confident enough. They're charming enough. And they're sure of themselves. They have a purpose. Women will often settle for betas because they're good enough. But women will eventually lack the spark that they need in their lives. Betas will often lack the swagger and often lack the ego that's associated with the alphas and sigmas. They're not the bad boy, but they're the nice guy. Now let's talk about the two that are on top of the food chain. And the reason why these two are on top of the food chain is they tend to have qualities, their positive traits tend to outweigh the negative traits that women also find attractive. So what actually would a generally what women want, the alpha and the sigma tend to fit in that category. So here are some positive traits for an alpha male. Leadership skills, natural leaders and they're very decisive. Confidence, self-assured and charismatic. Ambition, goal-oriented and motivated. Resilience, persistence and adaptable. Assertiveness, direct and boundary setting. Protectiveness, guardian and supportive. Competitiveness, high standards and inspiration. Charisma, magnetic personality, engaging. Decisiveness, quick thinkers and confident with choices. Independence, self-reliant and resourceful. Here are some potential negatives for an alpha male. Dominance, can be overbearing and intimidating. Aggressiveness, they can be confrontational and impatient. Arrogance, overconfidence and egocentric. Lack of empathy, insensitive and dismissive. Control issues, micromanagement and lack collaboration. Stubbornness, 
inflexibility and difficulty with feedback, workaholism, overworking, and burnout, competitiveness, cutthroat behavior, and jealousy, impatient, rush to decisions, and demanding, emotional suppression, bottling your emotions, and difficulty with vulnerability. All right, here we go. Let's talk about alpha males and their women. Positive aspects of alpha males, confidence, traction, and security, exactly what women are looking for. Leadership, decision-making, and guidance. Protectiveness, safety, and support. Ambition, motivation, and provision. Charisma, social skills, and they have influence. But sometimes their negatives outweigh the positives. Dominance, controlling behavior, intimidation, aggressiveness, conflict, and impatient. Arrogance, dismissive attitude, lack of empathy, workaholism, neglect, burnout, controlling issues, micromanagement, resistance to compromise. Bottom line, alphas can look down on women. I said it before, betas look up to women. Alphas could be looking down on women. He's attractive and well-dressed. Can have this, I support you and you serve me attitude. They like submissive women, social dominance, and they feed off on how their betas feel about them. They can be an open book. They're relatable. They can even wear their hearts on their sleeves, which some people don't believe. They're less private about their lives because after all, they want to be showy. They're intention seekers and they take high risk in life. They can be vain. They can they thrive in conflict. They're hard work and very knowledgeable. They see people as competitors. And be careful of beta and alpha's clothing. Also be careful of omega's and alpha's clothing. And let's explain this one. Here in LA, you see this all the time. The country club, the tennis instructor, the personal trainer, the country club, gym, you name it, right? Parties, you see this all the time where, and perhaps it's true, why did he buy that car? He's overcompensating. Why did he buy that house? He's overcompensating. A lot of times they may not be alphas. They could be, but a lot of times they may not be. And what happens is the woman loses the spark for them and they go elsewhere, right? You see that all the time. You even see this in society in the big picture. You see alpha males or perceived alpha males in sports, right? Or even in Hollywood. You see this all the time where the women leaves and goes somewhere else. And people go, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, that's true. You can't believe it. Or you could say it there and say, hey, you don't know their game, right? You don't, are they truly alphas? You really don't understand them. We don't know how they are behind the scenes. Apparently she wasn't getting what she needed and things happen. So a lot of times it can be perceived alpha and sometimes it can be fake alpha. Now let's go to the Sigma male. Like a strong, confident alpha, the Sigma male is the same way. Alphas tend to lead the pack. Sigmas tend to be lone wolves. Alphas tend to be extroverts, though not 100%. Sigmas tend to be introverts though not at 100%. So here are some positive traits of a Sigma male. Independence, self-reliant and resourceful. Adaptability, flexible and versatile. Self-awareness, introspective and mindful. Confidence, self-assured and composed. Non-conformity, free thinking and very authentic. Focus and determination, goal-oriented and perseverance observation skills, keen observers, and very analytical. Introversion, self-contained and reflective. Resilience, mentally tough and independent problem solving. Strong personal boundaries, respectful and self-respecting. Here are some potential negatives of a Sigma male. Isolation, can come across aloofness, social disconnected, independence, reluctant to ask for help, difficulty delegating, nonconformity, resistance to authority, and rebellion, introversion, communication issues, misunderstandings, emotional distance, difficulty expressing emotions, and lack of emotional support, focus and determination, obsessiveness and imbalance, analytical nature, overthinking and skepticism, self-reliant, 
isolation and problem solving, and reluctance to collaborate. Strong personal boundaries, rigid, distance, resilience, stubbornness, and isolation under stress. Let's talk about the Sigma male and their women. Some positive traits, independence. They look for self-sufficiency and respect for autonomy, authenticity, genuine connection, and honesty, confidence, self-assurance, and emotional stability, introspection, deep understanding and thoughtfulness, nonconformity, individualism, and open-mindedness, loyalty, committed partners, and reliability. However, sometimes the negatives will outweigh the positives. For example, emotional distance, difficulty expressing emotions, perceived coldness, isolation, preference for solitude, lack of social engagement, independence, reluctance to share, resistance to dependency, nonconformity, resistance to tradition, unpredictability, communication issues, limited communications, actually withholding feelings. The bottom line, Sigma see women as equals. As I said before, betas look up to women, alphas look down to women, sigmas view women as equals. Doesn't that just sound great? But is it? Sigmas are well content. What they look for in a woman is not to complete them. They look for a woman who harmonizes with them. They look for a woman to enhance their life. If a woman is taken away from their life, they will actually leave the woman. They can be very persuasive. They're well-dressed and they're very attractive. They like an independent woman. They're socially independent. They march to the beat of their own drum. They tend to be a closed book, unlike their alpha counterparts. They're not relatable. They're guarded. Their hearts are guarded. They're private about their lives. They actually thrive in conflict. They're also hardworking and very knowledgeable. They have an adaptability to themselves. They compete with themselves. Self is their priority. Sigmas are mysterious, which they find attractive. Because they're closed-minded and they guard in heart, women will seek to understand them more. Women want to peel back the onion and see what's actually there. Sigmas are very charismatic. And again, Sigmas see women as equals, so they want to be reciprocated. If, if a Sigma takes a woman on a way on a weekend getaway, they expect a cup of coffee or drinks or maybe pick up lunch. If a woman, if, they, if a Sigma buys a woman dinner, they expect maybe an after dinner cocktail. Sigmas will take a traditional role in the beginning, but after a while, they like to see the women contribute. They often justify this by, why should I teach your grandparents how to spoil their grandkids? That's the way Sigma males look at it. So again, as a woman, you would have to say, do I want to be treated as an equal? Sigmas will also easily leave a woman. For example, if a, like I said before, if the Sigma male is not being harmonized with the woman, if they're not, their lives are not advanced with the woman, a Sigma will easily leave and see that this is not working. If a woman is busting a Sigma's balls, they will easily leave. <laughs> Alphas and betas can tolerate a woman all over their case. Sigma males cannot tolerate that. I say it jokingly, of course, but it is a flaw or not, depending on how you look at it from a Sigma male. Also too, alphas and betas will date women across the whole spectrum. This goes along with the same thinking here about looking at it as far as equality. Alphas and betas will continue to date women from far, far perspectives, okay? A Sigma male will need a high value woman. The reason why is because Sigma males get caught up into looking for the perfect woman. But guess what? They'll never find her. All right, some final thoughts. There's so much that I didn't say, so much I really wanted to say, but at the end of the day, I, I can't have this video being a million hours long. And I know for a fact that eventually I'm gonna produce a Sigma male video, an alpha male video, and kind of tighten it up and go a little bit more, dive into deeper details, be more a little bit more specific offer a little bit more advice on, on several fronts uh, for the men and the women. But I wanna definitely give some perspective here today and some final thoughts. One is, I know white shirt guy was very politically correct, high level, just keep it short and sweet and just kind of went through each 
each of the six characteristics or each of the six traits, if you will. Um, and then I had black shirt guy come in and, and kind of be a little bit more specific and kind of hit home and hit hard. Um, and I really wanted to touch on that a little bit um, in the sense of, you know, just a couple of points, right? One is um, I hit hard on everybody. I, I thought I was just going to hit hard beta and below <clears throat> and then kind of give the, you know, beta and above, you know, God's gift to women and, and all this crazy stuff. Um, and then and I was going through it and I was writing it and I just took a long time over the last several weeks. I just said, you know, what? I'm just going to be fair and, and just be politically correct and hit hard on, on all six, right? So even the perceived, uh, you know, beta and above, if you will, the sigmas and the alphas, um, they, they got hit hard too. So uh, one of the things that's kind of keep in mind is, and this is my bias, of course, um, but, but I wish everybody, both men and women that watch this video, just really just took home and, um, you know what, I got that, I got that, I got that. You know what, I need to work on this, I need to work on this, I need to work on this, I, and just really own it. <laughs> Historically, how you got to an alpha and a beta, and this is my personal biases, excuse me, alpha and sigma, how you get to that point, is you do self-evaluate. You do watch motivational videos, you do watch a lot of these videos, you do a lot of research, and you perfect your game, right? That's how you end up in that sigma, alpha type of status. But even if you're below a beta, I want you guys to own it and sit there and say, how can I definitely approve? If you're watching this video, you're, you're already halfway there, as a matter of fact. You're already trying to be better and advance yourself through uh, through this pyramid or this perceived pyramid, if you will. If you have to do a couple things in order to help yourself, by all means, do it. Um, I don't mind labels because labels tell you where you currently are, not necessarily where you're gonna be. I like to always evaluate where am I and where, where I wanna strive to be. If labels actually hurt you, like, oh, I don't like the fact that I'm a Delta or, or yeah, I'm a Sigma, but I have all these negatives of being the Sigma, um, then go do away with the labels and, and just forget about the labels. Heck, heck, if you improve yourself by forgetting this video, by all means, my number one priority is for you to better yourself. So if you have to throw out the labels, throw out this video, and you're gonna work on your game, for example, you're gonna work on your confidence, your compatibility, your type A-ness, your aggressive, your assertiveness, your advancing your career, you have passion, you're able to hold your own on a date, make the woman laugh, inspire her. If you want to do away with all the labels, but you're working on that game to where you can attract more people in your life, then by all means, go for it. I'm, I'm all for that. Another point I want to make here in the final thoughts is um, a lot of it and, and a lot of research I've done on it, a lot of videos I've watched on it, you'll see everyone's personal biases. You'll see everyone's personal opinion. And by all means, I am no exception here today. No doubt about it. Um, but I want to justify some of my actions, especially with black shirt guy, <laughs> justify his actions, I should say. Uh, the alter ego is, um, is what I call perceived reality. And this is what I really want to hit home to you on it, uh, because I really want people to kind of grasp it and just own it and go, okay, how can I improve my current situation versus focus on what, what did he say? Why did he say that? Oh my God, I'm so pissed off. I'm so hurt. Oh. Um, just have what I call perceived reality. And what I mean by perceived reality, let me give you this example. <clears throat> what kind of person, or I should say, what kind of car does this person drive? Does he drive a Prius or does he drive a Ferrari? Okay, listen to the question. When I'm about to paint a picture, does this person drive a Prius or does he drive a Ferrari? Here he is in LA, parties every night, woohoo, different girl every night going down the street, going down the boulevard. Hey, he's at the bar. Hey, all right, ladies, drinks are on me. Woo-hoo, champagne. What, what kind of person, what, what kind of car does that person drive? Right? Did you say Ferrari? Yeah. Well, how do you know? How do you know you're right? I say Ferrari. How do I know I'm right? Because of perceived reality. Who would be the type of person to drive that Ferrari? It's a stereotype. Could that person I just described right now drive a Prius? Absolutely. Right? We have no scientific data to back up either one of our opinions right now, right? But we go with the perceived reality. You know what? That person's more likely to drive a Ferrari. So that's what I did to here today with Black Shirt Guy. I took all the characteristics, the positives and the negatives, and I went out and I kind of stereotyped where each person will actually be just like paint a picture, paint a color. And again, I did it for all six.
right? I didn't sit there and pick on any one particular type. And again, the whole idea is, how can I get myself better? And then for the ladies that are watching this video, I also want you to sit there and say, oh my God, I realize who I am and I need to be dating this particular kind of guy. Or why am I focused over here and I should be over here? Or you know what? I too can benefit from a guy like that. Because there's a lot of ladies who, are watched, who watch this video and go, oh my God, I've always been dating losers. Oh my God, how come I can't have a real man in my life? Well, maybe now you have some characteristics on what you can look for, what your perceived real man is. Right? Maybe you're sitting there focused on alphas and you should be focused on the sigmas or vice versa. Maybe a beta male will be appropriate for you. Maybe you're, you're dating somewhere lower in the pyramid and you're very irritated, right? You don't have that safety. Oh my God, these men lack confidence. Oh my God, he doesn't make dating plans. He keeps pushing it back on me. Oh, I don't know, where do you wanna eat? Well, I don't know what time works for you. Well, what about what day works for you? I'm tired of dating all these indecisive men, these feminine type men, and I want a masculine man. Okay, well now you have some characteristics of what you need to look for to be happy. So hopefully it's not just about what can the men get out of the video and how can the men strive to get better. It's also for a woman to sit there and say, oh wow, based on what I need in my life, I would tend to probably gel with this individual. So hopefully that does help. Before we end today's video, I just want to throw white shirt guy under the bus and expose him with all the personality traits here today. So let's begin and let's do an assessment on white shirt guy. How can he be a Omega male? Well, he takes the creativity from Omega males. He applies that to his YouTube channel. That's one plus that he takes from the Omega side. How does he work on the Gamma side? He takes the overall experience from the Gamma. Gamma's love and experience and, and white shirt guy takes that from them. What does he take? He takes all the travel and all the experiences, just like a gamma. On the Delta side, he takes the team building approach. White shirt guy can work really well in a team environment. On the beta side, however, he needs help. We've all been there before, but we're beta towards the women. White shirt guy's downfall, he loves everyone. He loves all his family. He loves all his friends, childhood friends, new friends, you name it, he is there for them. And that could be bad because not everybody is there for him, okay? He treats them all the time, but not everybody treats him. He's there for them all the time, but not everyone's here for him. White shirt guy actually needs to be disliked more. He has too many people that like him and he's gonna work on it and I'm gonna be there for him. <laughs> as far as the alpha goes, you look at his Facebook, he's all about the pack. It's about him, family, and friends. YouTube channel all alpha all about him all about his pack in that case his pack is viewers that's how he works his alpha and his sigma help him in his wall street career as far as the confidence charismatic and somewhat attractive <laughs> he's an extrovert he loves the center of attention he loves making everyone laugh including the ladies he can also be an introvert. He can sit there and observe in a party and make assessments on everyone. So he can be an extrovert and an introvert. He loves being the life of the party and he also enjoys being at home, watching his music videos on YouTube and just chilling out with nobody around. When it comes to women, oh my gosh, he is the epitome, the epitome, quintessential, stereotypical Sigma male. Make no bones about it. He is a true Sigma male when it comes to women. He can't handle a princess. He needs a high value woman. He can't have a woman that's one-sided. He prefers a woman who also reciprocates. He likes to be bought drinks. He likes to be bought food. He likes to come over for dinner where she cooks. So white shirt guy is a true Sigma male. He doesn't buy stranger drinks in the bar. He doesn't look for women across the room tell the server buy drinks. He shies away about using his career and bringing up his career to other women. And yes, he gets caught up for looking for the perfect woman. She doesn't exist, but he still strives for it. All Sigma males look for that perfect woman. They date high value women. They can't handle anybody busting their chops. Historically, Sigma males have tend to leave their women when they're not harmonized, as I said in the segment before. And as I said before, and white shirt guy is no exception. 
He has done that before. Any woman that gets up his butt, he is gone. It's that simple. But in his defense, the Sigma male flaws, he actually makes an advantage. So there you have it, folks. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and forward this video to a loved one. And we'll see you in the next segment.